Hey there YouTube, I'm Yukitsu, this is Yukitsu Times, welcome to my channel, welcome back to Battlefleet Gothic. So the Space Marines came out just recently, I played a little bit of them to get uh, my count up a little bit. I was going to get to 8 before I did this, but then I realized that they don't have battle cruisers and you get a battleship at level 6. So you get access to your battleship much earlier to compensate for the fact that you don't have those cruisers in between there. I believe they're going to get another battle cruiser, or battleship rather at level 8 as well, as well as another cruiser at 7, but... This allows me to show you pretty much their entire roster. So let's go through what the Space Marines have got here. So I've got an absolute spam in my light cruiser list of the Vanguard Mark III's, but uh, they've got some other options there. I've got one of the Mark I's as well, which is quite good. So let's go through the differences here. Uh, first of all, let's go with the uh, list of ships here. We've got the Vanguard Mark I. All of these ships have uh, 400 health, same as the Eldar, ironically. Shields of 100, speed of 225, rotation of 15 degrees a second, detection of 5,000 range, troop value of 70, which is very, very good, 9 turrets, and then armor is 75 all around. Now, the difference between each of these is just the weapon loadout, so we will ignore those statistics from here on out because they'll be the same. Uh, the Vanguard Mark I has the Super Prow, or Prow Super Heavy uh, Torpedo Launchers. These guys... Typical torpedo launcher, exact same as a, a vanilla torpedo launchers in every way. They use the macro batteries on the sides that they're the same as the um, Imperial Navy ones on the Dauntlesses, but they've only got half as many shots on the broadside. And you'll notice that they say number of attacks three. They have updated this so that the number of guns is now representative of how many guns are actually on the ship. So three shots, that's because we've got three. If we went to the Imperial, looked at the Dauntless, it would say six because they've got six of that type of gun. So, um, th these things have half the broadside power of the Imperial Dauntless. So next up, you've got the Ordnance Launch Bay, and this fires one unit of uh, fighters. For the Imperials, they only fire Thunderhawk gunships, and, or, or um, Thunderhawk uh, transport ships. This can only do assault actions, they fire squads of three. These are much, much more durable than typical assault ships, though, uh, typically making it to ships even if there's a little bit of fighter cover. Um, the fact that they've only got one bay on the Va Vanguard Mark I, or any of these for ex uh, example, means that you're not really a carrier focus, it's just a nice little addition. The problem with this is that you cannot launch fighters, and you require an upgrade to fire bombers. So, uh, if you want to have fighter covers, you have to go into your upgrades here, and you have to take the, or sorry, the skills. And much like the Eldar, you can take the Stormhawk Squadron here. This is a fighter squadron. The problem is that uh, the fighters for the Space Marines are inferior to the Eldar ones. So this is an inferior skill because you've only got two interceptions per fighter as opposed to the Eldar's three. And you've got the same sort of cooldown. Um, so it's just a little bit worse. They've also got the upgrade over here that lets them gain access to the Thunderhawk gunships. And those can be used as bombers directly. So you get three of those. Uh, dealing high damage and again they're good at covering themselves so they don't need the cover so that's the uh, Vanguard Mark 1 this ship is a little bit awkward because it's got such high armor values and such high um, speed and so on and so forth it can be used quite effectively and quite uh, with quite a lot of damage but there's so many things that are armor penetrating in this game that provides them significant trouble um, the high troop value though is something that's going to be very very good for these because they will want to run in close to get their own boarding actions in now the fact that they've got 400 hull integrity i think is a bit of a problem but uh, we'll get into some of the other characteristics that might make it worthwhile to have that next up you got the mark ii it replaces the torpedo launcher with two light prowl lances these deal uh, one damage per second each um, they're pretty decent stable damage and uh, the fact that you get two of them is pretty nice uh, it would have been nice if they had the heavy lance instead, though, because that, I think, does a little bit more damage per second. Bit, bit, bit of a better weapon, but uh, this is pretty okay. Lastly, you've got the Vanguard Mark III, and this replaces the um, lances or whatever with the Prowl Light Bombardment Cannon. And now, this has the same damage per second as the lances, but it has a much, much higher critical chance, 15% per shot. Um, and so you're taking that sort of chance that you're not going to hit, and you're taking this that it has much, much higher chance to crit. Um, so it's a little bit more all or nothing. This still is armor piercing, so you don't have to take the lance if you don't want to. If you want to penetrate heavy armor, this will still do the job quite effectively. And it's a very, very sort of effective weapon for uh, trying to disable enemy ships, and that's why I like it. So uh, that's what I've taken quite a lot of. Now, they do have some unique Space Marine upgrades for torpedo launchers, which is why I've got uh, this Vanguard Mark I here. 
So don't dismiss it out of hand. If you want to go for a very torpedo-focused Space Marine fleet, it is possible, especially if you're fighting other Space Marines. Um, these can be quite good because torpedoes deal really, really good damage. They penetrate armor very effectively, and since they've only got 400 hull integrity, any torpedo that hits is going to deal a ton of damage to these guys. Um, but for weaponry, you can get the boarding torpedo upgrade. The interesting thing about boarding torpedoes is that they're homing. So you can fire off a whole bunch of these boarding torpedoes, and they will almost inevitably hit the enemy ship unless they've got lots of turrets, unless they run um, and, and get it behind some sort of uh, terrain or something like that to block the torpedoes, or even have their en your enemy ships uh, ram into them or something like that. So these things can be quite annoying. They do require you to have vision, though, so you can't just launch them across the map and have them hoe in on the enemy. You do need to get that vision. Uh, but once you have, they do have unlimited range, so you can spam them from across the map. One of the few times where I would argue that it's useful to have um, the, the auger probe or something like that. Next up we've got the uh, cruiser tier ships, and these are what they have instead of the um, battle cruisers. They sort of have mixes of these and the battleships, but in any event, let's go through the uh, general characteristics here. Got again three models here, the Strike Cruiser Mark I. It's got a held integrity of 600, so again, same as the Eldar sort of thing. They've only got 100 shields, so they don't have an upgrade on that. Their speed is 188, their rotation is 10 degrees per second, um, detection 5000, troop value 70, turrets 12, armor 75 all around. So the Mark I has the two ordnance launch bays, allowing it to be a sort of a dedicated carrier. It's got the bombardment cannon turret, which fires sort of all around, and it has a range of uh, 6000. Deals 45 damage with a reload speed of 15 seconds with a very high critical chance, and again it ignores armor. So this is an incredibly uh, powerful weapon, but it has a low wind-up time. Um, you do definitely want to be hitting directly on the hull with this, so it, it's a very very good weapon for that sort of thing just because you've got that high chance of critical. Uh, you've got the macro batteries. These are the heavy macro batteries. It's got four. It's the same as a Dominator, but unlike a Dominator, you've only got one per side, whereas a Dominator has four. Uh, in total, two on each side. So you end up again with half the damage that another cruiser of this tier would have. Next up, you've got the cru cruiser uh, Strike Mark II. Instead of the Ordnance uh, launch base, you've got the Prow Heavy Torpedo Launcher firing six torpedoes instead of the four, and otherwise the weapons are the same. And the Mark III here has that Heavy Prow Lance, which I do think is quite good, but not necessarily the best option because the Ordnance for the Space Marines is one of the few ways that they can really defeat other Space Marines, I find. And yeah, the Heavy Prowl Lance is theoretically good against Space Marines, but it's not going to really make up for the fact that you could do that much, much higher Nova damage with the Torpedoes, for example. Um, you'll notice that I've got sort of a setup here. Two of them are the Mark IIs with the Torpedoes, and I've got one with the Mark Ones as a sort of carrier. Next up, you've got the Battleships, and this is sort of your final tier. You've got two options there. There's the Mark I. Both of them have 1,200 hull integrity, so you finally actually got something with decent hull integrity. This is actually more akin to something like the Imperial Navy has. Uh, they've got 400 shields, um, which is, again, something more akin to what the Imperial has. Uh, their speed is 150, rotation is 5 degrees a second, their detection range is 5,000, troop value 70, turrets 18, armor 18, uh, 75 all around. So the Mark I here, it's got three bombardment current uh, cannon turrets which is huge damage potential. It's very, very short range though, and it does risk missing. So there is that sort of risk, but that Nova damage that you do with that is humongous. Next up, you got the macro battery. This actually is a battery of five instead of four. So it's even a little bit heavier than the heavy macro batteries, but their reload time's a little bit longer. Uh, the damage per second is actually a little bit, um, I think actually a little bit lower than the uh, heavy macro battery, but this is still pretty good. Next up, you've got the Prow Super Heavy Torpedo Launcher, six shots again, and Ordnance Launch Bay with three fighter squadrons. So this is, again, just a progression. Go one, two, three, basically on the carriers. Lastly, you've got the uh, Battle Barge Mark II. This has uh, Lance, this is a Lance-focused variant of uh, the Battle Barge. It's replacing the torpedoes with two Heavy Prow Lances, which is a pretty decent uh, switch in some respects, because you switch from like six torpedoes to uh, two heavy prowl lances, whereas if you did it with the cruiser, you'd be switching from six torpedoes to one heavy prowl lance. This is actually a pretty decent upgrade. Uh, can, if you were to, can, take, to take lances, this would be the one that you would want to take it on. Um, it replaces the heavy bombardment cannons, though, with the lance turrets, which are much, much better range, but their damage per second is way, way worse. It's a third of what you'd get out of the Battle Barge Mark I. 
Um, so you'd take this one for reliability and range, whereas you would take the Mark I if you really wanted to lay the smack down on something uh, with high criticals, high damage, and the uh, torpedoes. Now, this one still does have the carrier capacity, which can help it out quite a bit. Um, and the heavy prowl lance having 9,000 range as opposed to the sort of normal is pretty decent as well. But uh, you'll notice that the Imperial Navy doesn't have that many upgrades for their lances. In fact, it's just got refined lenses, which is not exactly great. Um, so I don't really think that lance builds are too viable for the Space Marines, but you could definitely go that route if you really wanted to. They do have some interesting and unique upgrades in here. For example, uh, they've got the Voss Pattern Void Shield shared with the Imperials, admittedly. They've got the First Company Terminators, which uh, replaces your generic lightning strike. Unlike most, which give you two lightning strike actions, this one reduces the enemy troop value by 10. They've got um, Chapter Relic, which increases your troop value by 5, which is pretty okay. They've got um, Chapter Banner, which increases uh, the number of times you can use boarding actions with lightning strikes, which, has, which is really, really good, actually. They've got those homing torpedoes. They've got the ability to use Thunderhawk gunships, which is just basically access to bombers. Uh, so this one, you would I wouldn't even really count as unique skills, just gaining back something they don't otherwise have. For skills, very, very vanilla. The only thing that's unique is the Stormhawk Squadron, and that even then is basically what you see with the Eldar. Uh, for favors, you've got the Master of Sanctity. All of these guys have a sort of unique thing going for them with Space Marines. You've got uh, an empty crew slot here, and this always goes for each of the favors. So if we look here, um, this says that uh, reduce the cooldown of the Word of the Emperor skill by 5 seconds per level, and unlocks the Master of Sanctity crew member. So that uh, each of these favors unlocks a new crew member that would go into that slot. So if you um, take Master of Sanctity, for example, it would open there and then you'd level it up and that would gain bonuses to that skill. What this does is it gives you um, immunity to enemy assault actions for a limited time period, which can be very, very effective for Space Marines and especially in mirror matches. Um, it could also help you out if you're getting spammed by enemy bombers or something like that, but other than that, I think that the cooldown on this is so long and the duration is so short that it's going to be very, very situational. Um, Next up, you've got Chief Librarian. Again, you can unlock this guy. Uh, this forces mute, uh, mutiny checks, which can be extremely effective against something like orcs. If you just knock out a couple of escorts or something like that, then you can start using Fear of the Darkness. Um, it reduces the... it like There's a base 10% chance that the enemy will fail this, even if they have not lost any ships. Um, and you can increase that with the Chief Librarian, making it so that they're very, very likely to mutiny. Next up is Master of the Forge. This one I kind of like. It's got Ruins of Engineering, grants one additional upgrade slot to the ship, and then every level you get on the uh, Master of the Forge gives a plus one upgrade slot. Now, the Space Marines are actually fairly upgrade starved because their ships require so many different things to be both defensive, to have maneuverability, and they've got some of the interesting unique ones there. And their weapons are so poor that they kind of need upgrades as well. So I do think that the... Um, Master of the Forge is going to be one of my go-tos. The Chief Librarian could also be a very, very strong one, though. Chapter Master is the last one. You can only have um, one Chapter Master in the fleet, but it gives you a couple unique bonuses. It allows you to switch between them at will. Um, basically, the base value, I think, for Finest Warrior is uh, 5 uh, increased your troop value, and it reduces the enemy's troop value by 2 or something like that. And uh, you can upgrade the Chapter Master here, and that gives additional um, penalties to the enemy and bonuses to you. That's actually the other way around. It's minus 5 to the enemy uh, troop value, and it's uh, plus 2 to your own troop value. Uh, the other thing is that uh, if you switch to the other stance, all the ships in your fleet gain bonuses when they're using Lock-On, Reload, and Brace for Impact. So if we look over here, quite a long list there. If you're using Lock-On, uh, it gives an additional plus 2.5 points in accuracy and plus 12.5. Uh, percent critical chance per level is my guess. Um, it might be plus 12.5 critical chance per level, but I'm guessing what it is is whatever bonus it is, like say you've got a 22.5% chance of critting, um, increase that by 12.5% of 22.5% if you get what I'm saying there. Uh, Brace for Impact gives you an additional um, 2 points of armor per level and uh, penalizes the enemy's accuracy by an additional 2.5%. Uh, reload gives plus 2.5 to the combustion gauge refill rate and minus 2.5 points on skill cooldowns. Not really 100% sure what exactly points means there, but it uh, 
is one of those things that could be quite strong. So you're going to want to uh, rush that on your battle barge as soon as you can afford it, although, you know, it's very, very expensive at 1,600. So let's go back to the stats, though. There's some unique things about the Space Marines that I think could be pretty uh, interesting here. So you got Space Marine accuracy, and you'll notice it's quite high, uh, basically similar to what the Eldar have. You've got the MA shell no no fear, only the most extreme circumstances can push the crew of a Space Marine vessel to insubordinate. Um, the ship can't be insubordinate if its warp jump is on cooldown, and honestly, that doesn't really come up all that often. Now, I've noticed that these guys don't seem to ever flee anyway. Um, I've never had an insubordinate uh, Space Marine ship, even when one's about to be exploded, so that doesn't seem to actually be an issue with them. Um, you've got Space Marine maneuvers, basically, the exact same sort of stuff that you would normally get. And you've got the surgical strike action. All assault actions consider enemy troop value reduced by 10, meaning you're actually really quite likely to succeed on a boarding action or something. And chances to destroy targeted enemy subsystems are quadrupled instead of doubled. So you definitely want to be targeting specific systems using the Space Marine so that you can get those boarding actions in and destroy those critical systems. And very importantly, you want to be destroying enemy um enemy shields with the Space Marines because they have such low punching power that if the enemy are cycling the shields back up and forth, then you're going to have a very, very hard time actually defeating them. Now, what the Space Marine fleet sort of struggles in is that they've got really nothing at long range that's very, very effective. Now, they've got the Battle Barge Mark II, but it will lose to something like a Retribution just because that Retribution does have superior firepower at long range, more consistent firepower at long range. You've also got ships like... Uh, you know, this ship over here, the cruiser, all of the stuff that they've got really is kind of at 6,000. Now, the fact that you can deploy fighters does mitigate that quite a bit, but since they only do assault actions, all you can do is cripple, and since um, they don't have the ability to use fighter screens of their own, they're incapable of really protecting themselves um, against enemy ships. You'll notice I'm pooling crew here, and that's because I want to wait till I've got my favor so that I can upgrade it with that. Uh, for crew, for Space Marines, Space Marines is still actually quite important because they're going to be in boarding range quite often. Uh, they don't have the best turret values, so they're not exactly that resilient against them. I think that Servitors and Tech Marines, though, are a good secondary choice after that to max out after the uh, Favor-specific one. Although I think that it's important to go for the Favor-specific um, after the Space Marines, depending on how many points you can get uh, at any given time. I think that for everyone, Servitors is really, really good right now, um, and Master Gunner could be potentially quite okay, but like they've got such high critical chance that increasing that by 100%, for example, um, would make the Heavy Bombard uh, do like criticals half the time, which is really, really good, but at the same time, their health pool is so low that Tech Marines might be good. I think that to a certain extent, though, you can drop the Space Marine upgrade just because you've got fairly high base values and you've got the ability to upgrade it with an upgrade if you happen to go that route. All right, so we've got a cruiser clash here. We're up against Spes Marine, who I'm assuming is using Spes Marines. All right. So we're going to go ahead and take our battle barge, and we're going to um, take our two Strike Mark IIs with us. So we've got lots and lots of torpedoes. Just enough points fitting in there. It would be, it's a shame that you can't have a model of this, like the Mark, if, if the Mark II had the three bombardment cannons, the torpedo launchers, or sorry, um, the three bombardment cannons, the forward lances, and the uh, batteries, I think it would be a lot better, but as it is, like the drop in damage per second is just too extreme. You'll notice the size of the battle barge is quite large. Um, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, automate some of our skills here. Let's see how many ships my opponent's deploying. He's deploying five, so he's probably got um, at least two of the smaller ships. Uh, uh, the, I can't, Vanguards. Vanguards, I think, is what it was. All right, so we've only got one carrier in this particular composition, which I'm not too happy about. We're going to go ahead and use Brace for Impact, and uh, we're going to keep Emergency Repairs not on Automated, just because you don't ready. actually want to automate uh, repairs anymore because you can uh, get rid of those temporaries. Of course. All right, let's see what we can do here. Tactical maneuver engaged. Show us the enemy. All right, so we kind of wibbled around a little bit there. I am listening. We're moving to position. Let's see if our opponent has any sort of torpedoes. Oh, I'm gonna Marines actually ready. go ahead and do 
this. Alright, now, Space Marine ships, like, um, have pretty interesting matchups against one another just because, like, they're so Moving low damage position. and they've got such huge amounts of armor that it comes down to a certain degree about uh, boring actions being better or torpedo use or something Show like that. It's rarely who has better Practical play with the macro cannons because realistically that's not really what you're going to be using. Hold course. I think we got some Ready good hits there, battle. actually. Hold course. Alright, so we want to stop Practical here just because we want to let our battle barge catch up. It being a slower ship. I think we got some good hits on that ship over there, whatever the heck that is. I think they've got an escort over here as well. Yeah, that's um, a escort vessel ready. with torpedoes. I forget what they're called. I to forgot to go over the needed. escorts. I don't really take them with Space Marines all that often. But um, they've got the basically enemy. one with torpedoes, one that's double macro turret, Underway. and one with the lance. So it's very, very sort of straightforward. They don't actually have as much armor as you think they could have. Like, if they had the 75 armor, that would make them pretty interesting and unique, I think. But they don't, so. To where we are needed. Right, so we've got some enemy firing off uh, some stuff there. Just gonna use that uh, boarding action because it'll instantly destroy that ship there. Moving to position. Ooh, well, I got absolutely wrecked by Vanguard's. or by uh, assault boats. Alright, so the bombard from my uh tactical maneuver so we're gonna go ahead and use uh That's your command. There. Astati's vessel ready. Hold course. Looks like we've lost a weapon system on this there. Alright, um we'll wait till some of the stuff hits and then we'll uh go ahead and use a repair. Now, actually. Where's my other ship here? There it is. Got some good hits with those torpedoes. Let's turn this guy around, see if we can fire these torpedoes off somewhere. Looks like my opponent is trying to get away with some of these ships there. As he should be. Alright, so let's uh, get you. We should actually be uh, targeting things here. Murder. I am listening. Alright, good. Just hoping for that uh, shot there. Yep, got our uh, generator destroyed on that one ship there. Alright, perfect. That's what we're looking for. Triple fires, destroyed engines, destroyed weapon is kind of obnoxious, but let's see if we can't uh, cancel this. Looks like my opponent's forced to run out of the fight, though, completely. According to torpedo success, it's triple fires. Jeez. No, he's going to get away with these ships. This is sort of the problem that Space Marines run into. Oh, he might pop that one. Yep. Moving to position. Go. Beginning tactical assessment. Did a bit of ram there. Astartes vessel ready. Oh, what the hell? Come on, game. You Show can, you can handle it. You can make it. Let's just put that on that guy for the hell of it. No, don't ram me. All right, there we go. That's a pretty convincing win for us there. Yeah, the Battle Barge is very, very high DPS for a Space Marine vessel, which is why I like it. Um, but you sort of have to center your fleet around it. If your opponent is focusing it, um, it can take a ton of damage, and it can dish out a ton of damage. So it's very, very hard to decide what you should be fighting in that case. Um, for me, though, like, basically whenever you're playing Space Marines against Space Marines, it's look for whenever you can use those torpedoes. My opponent made the mistake of using those boarding torpedoes, which 
yeah, it was getting good cripples against me, but it was not getting good uh, damage against me, and there's a big difference between the two. He could have lined up easy flanking shots with those torpedoes and absolutely hammered my battle barge, and that would have really sucked for me. But uh, since he didn't, that really, really helped me out. So that's sort of the Space Marine fleet. I think that they're one of the sort of uh, stranger ones right now, just because, yes, I do think that they are strong, but they're kind of vulnerable like they have really really obvious and glaring weaknesses like uh the weakness that these guys have to lance hits for example is ludicrous their weakness to torpedoes is absurd um and because of that they suffer quite badly against things that can take a lot of lances and a lot of torpedoes um they're not great at catching carriers but they're also not great at destroying things with macro batteries in a protracted fight the reason that they still are okay is that they're fast and maneuverable um, they're somewhat durable, like they, they're more durable than Eldar, but not as durable as Imperial Navy. Um, probably a little bit more durable than the uh, Forces of Chaos, a little bit less than the uh, Orcs and Goblins, or the Orcs uh, rather. But the thing that they really s sort of uh, excel in is this additional surgical strike boarding action ability, as well as their gen general high boarding abilities to begin with. Um, and especially things like if you're getting boarded by a battle barge, you're going to have like a really bad time. You're going to eat a lot of criticals. So the fact that they can destroy so many systems so quickly, especially if you're using that surgical strike to particularly aim at something that needs to be destroyed, um, that can absolutely demolish the strength of a fleet that is designed to sort of counter the Space Marines. Like if you think that you're going to be able to kite them for forever and they suddenly get like a whole bunch of engine destroyed criticals against you, then the uh, Space Marines can really clean up. If you're using lances and they destroy all your weapons, they can really clean up. If you've got tons and tons of tankiness and they destroy all your shields, uh, you're, you're in a ton of trouble. So they have that ability to pick apart what it, what's countering them. And once they're no longer being countered by the enemy fleet, the fact that they're kind of crappy otherwise really allows them to sort of make up for it and destroy them uh, otherwise. So let's go over the uh, escorts because I forgot to talk about them. Uh, you've got the Hunter Destroyer. It's got two torpedoes, prowl, uh, light macro turret. The macro turret is the typical one, although I think that uh, the Imperial Navy wants fire two per. Hmm. So anyway, it just does a little bit of damage from that. Um, then it's got that nice torpedo hit there. You've got the uh, light prowl lance on these ones, one damage per second from them. Pretty okay. Light double macro turret. This one does fire twice. I guess it's just the torpedo one that uh, has less. It's also got less hull integrity, by the way. Uh, and then you've got the Gladius Frigate. It's got two of the light double macro turrets for a total of four, for a total of four damage per second, which is pretty respectable. You can actually mass these up and have them deal some pretty good damage once you've upgraded them with the armor pe uh, penetrating ammunition. Although I have no real intention of getting that on these guys myself. That could potentially be something you want to get. Um, so you can take those for that pur purpose. I like how these guys have surgical strike, even though they can't actually, as far as I know, use it. Pretty damn sure they can't use it. Um, yeah, no, no, they absolutely don't. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much everything there is about these guys. Now, if you are going to take escorts, um, Nova Frigates are a good reliable choice if you're fighting other Space Marines. I do find that that's probably the most uh, simplistic choice. If you're up against uh, Space Marines, you could also use the Hunter Destroyer because of the torpedo. Um, if you double hit with those, is a huge amount of damage. It's just that that's a little bit finicky and you're probably gonna be trying to aim the torpedoes on your vanguards or uh, cruisers or even your battle barge. So um, I'm gonna be playing these guys up until I've got uh, the chapter master favor on my battle barge. I do think that that's going to really swing the way that my fleet works and make it a lot better. But uh, for now, that is going to be just about everything about the fleet. If you're wondering, um, I'm using the Dark Angels. They're my favorite of the chapters. But the differences between the chapters are purely aesthetic, so don't worry about which one you've picked. They all work the same. The best reason to pick the Dark Angels, though, is that uh, it replaces the background port maw with the rock. And that is the, their sort of home planet turned into a space base because they're, they're kind of like that. So anyway, I hope you found this episode enjoyable, and of course, as always, I hope to see you all next time.